Welcome to Empowering Plants, a show dedicated to identifying waste and undue expense in the health benefits industry, discovering ways to maximize benefits while minimizing costs, and empowering employers, administrators, and consultants to emphasize, once again, the benefit in Benefit Plan. Today's episode is brought to you by the FIA Group, empowering plans since 1999. Now here are your hosts, the FIA Group's own CEO, Adam Russo, and Senior Vice President and General Counsel, Ron Peck. And Brady. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Empowering Plans of the FIA Group. I am your co-host, Adam Russo, and with me as always is, oh, wait a second, he's not here. Ron E. Peck has left the building. Folks, Ron is going down to D.C. to work with our friends at SIA to try to push ahead some very important legislation to help the self-insured industry. We'll talk about that some other time. But, you know, let me, I want everyone to know this. And, Pat, I, I know that you know this already. Pat Santos, our esteemed producer, who looks amazing today in a purple shirt. Amazing. Look, great color, Pat. Looks good on you. Matches the skin tone. So, Ron is one of those people that when you have a 10 o'clock flight, Ron literally gets there the night before. Ron arrives at the airport at least four hours pre-flight. And I don't think he's ever checked in a bag. Brady, you're here with us today. Folks, say hello to Brady Bizarro. Hello, Brady. Hello, Brady. Brady, when you go away on vacation... If you've been, have you been on vacation? Of course, yeah. Do you check in bags? Have you ever checked in bags? I have. Ron Peck has never checked in a bag. Ron goes on a three-day trip with no carry-on luggage. <laughs> it's amazing. He literally, I think, just wears the clothes constantly, just wears the suit over again. He brings an extra T-shirt and underwear to keep fresh, I guess. But the same socks, I'm assuming, the same shirt, the same pants. But Ron is a light traveler, which can be good. I wish my wife was travel a lot lighter on some of our trips. But, folks, Ron isn't going to be here, but that's okay because we have a really, really special guest who flew all the way here from my beloved homeland of Poland, from Polska. Please, everyone, welcome Tomasz Olszewski, or, as you want to Americanize it, Tom. Has anyone ever called you Tom? Yeah, but uh, I don't mind. (laughs) You don't mind when people call you Tom? Well, people around here know we didn't know to call me Tomasz, so, I mean... So, just so everyone knows, you can hear from the accent, Tomasz has, you know, was born in... What's the name of that town that you were born in? Uh, Suwałki. Okay, Suwałki. Now, folks, I do speak Polish. I actually can read it and write it. So, the V sound is the letter W. Right. So, any American will look at it and say, well, it's yeah. Suwałki, right? right, right like right, some right. town in Wisconsin, right? You were born in <laughs> Suwałki, Wisconsin. But Suwałki, Poland, in 1990. So, think about it. When I was in high school, almost graduating... Was when Tomas was born, and what at what age did you move to America, Tomas? Fifteen. I was fifteen. Yeah. So, folks, he was fifteen when he first got here. The reason why we have him on today is this is our next Faces of Fia, our first international uh, co-host, and the reason why it's so important is Tomas, you got here at fifteen, and when you first got here, did your family tell you that they wanted you to assimilate? Did they want you to like Americanize yourself? Did they tell you to call yourself Tom, or were they like, yeah, go to school, and your name's going to be Tom? I mean, you went to high school, right? You right, started right, off in high right. school? Yeah, I started What was that like? How'd it go? Well, it was very different, but, like, it all came naturally. Nobody was, like, pushing me to be, like, Americanized. I was just myself. And uh, So, the first day of school was what grade? Well, it was ninth grade. I started, ninth grade? I started high school fresh off, like, not like knowing very little English at that time, so... Okay, well, let's, let's, I, I'm interested in this. You walk into Randolph High School. Right. Ninth grade. Right. You barely speak English? Barely, like just basics. Like what? I could understand yeah, more I, than I'd actually. I, I could pretty much understand like most of these things, but... um, I had Like, really could you talk to a girl? Um, uh, no. Okay, no. <laughs> so that's already bad, right? He's starting right. off. So the first day, the teacher introduces you to the cl- school, the class, and they say, your name is... Tomasz Olszewski. <laughs> <laughs> But actually, I was in the English second language classes. Okay, for, for uh, some of the classes. For some of the classes. But right. you, but you would walk into some classes and people are like, your name is what? Like Tomas? Right, right, right. Like what is that? Like even the last name is. I mean, the last name, folks, just so everyone knows how to spell it. O L S Z E W S K I. Brady, what do you think of that last name? I couldn't even begin to tell you. So there is some last names that a friend, like I have a friend of mine who it's Pshodzka. Right. Right. P R Z Y C H O D Z K I. It just doesn't there's go together. There's eight anymore. consonants <laughs> before the first vowel. And there's a lot of spitting involved as well in that last name, right. I would think, right? Jeez. So, Tomas, you came here, age of 15. So, how soon after that did you start working at FIA? Two years. Yeah, because I was looking for, like, for a summer job, let's say. And uh, at this point, I was just looking for any job. And how'd you find us? Uh, actually, it was my mom's friend that referred me. Like, you know, oh, there's this guy Adam. He owns a company. He hires people like my age for like 
filing and like stuff like that. So like, and you heard I I that I was Polish. Yeah, right, right. Yeah, that's Even though my last name is Russo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah <laughs> okay, which I think must have been weird. Like, why is that guy Polish? That doesn't make any sense. Right, right. It's funny because this the day before I had an interview at the Reebok store, <laughs> and actually I got the job at the Reebok store. Right. Isn't Reebok out of business? Uh, I think. And, but oh, then close. Like, <laughs> next day I have to call him back and tell him I'm not interested anymore. Wow. So <laughs> This is impressive. Yeah, so in 2007, you chose Fia over Reebok. Right. I'm just saying. So you have, what's the word I'm looking for? He's, he's a visionary. He had the foresight to know. He knew that one day, Fia's going to be bigger, bigger than, than Reebok. Reebok. Right. Maybe, right? Yeah, right, right. Okay. So, <laughs> so what happened? So you started working here doing what? Basic stuff. Filing, pulling uh, files and stuff like that. Like stuff that we don't even have anymore. We don't have right. paper files we anymore. Don't have, like, paper like, we don't files actually later. have the job that Tamash did. Doesn't, doesn't exist. exist. Yeah. We don't have a filing. We used to have file cabinets. Remember we had these we to like push the cabinets over and yeah. like put the files away? So that doesn't exist anymore. You, you realize that. Yeah, as well as physical at that time. So you would have had a job at Reebok. Right now you be, might have been working at Reebok full time and been laid off. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. His job is gone there yeah. too. <laughs> His job has gone. All right. So you worked there through high school and then what happened? And then I decided to work full time. Then like after a year of doing like the filing, I got promoted to claim support department, doing the same thing I basically do now. So, so folks, you don't know. So Tomas almost is like I, I don't want to say almost. Tomas is part of my family. He started working at Fiat so long ago. He's been at Fiat now for so twelve. This year, twelve. Yeah, year. it's going up twelve years. So. Right, twelve years. So you know, and he was a young kid. He was almost like a son or a younger brother. So the really cool part of your story is what happened in twenty thirteen. Tell us a little bit of background. Your parents live here. Right. But you still have a family home in Poland, correct? Right. Most of my family is actually here. So you would go back to Poland in the summertime. Yeah. Without your parents. Yeah, basically. By you, with you and your brother, who, by the way, Piot, that is also Peter. He also works here, his brother. We'll yeah. interview him in a couple years, <laughs> let's say, when he gets a little older. But you and your brother, this is the interesting part, used to go back to Poland by yourselves and stay at the family house right. alone for like the summer, summer in and Christmas. your yeah. early 20s, late teens. Right. That must have been fun. Oh, yeah. It was <laughs> really fun. <laughs> so, like... So, we kept going back every year, basically. <laughs> you kept going back, just parties at the Olszewski's house, I'm right, assuming. Right, yeah, yeah. Just constant parties. All, all so, time, yeah. what happened in 2013? Well, in 2013, I decided to move back to Poland for good. All right. You want to tell the listening audience why, Tomasz? I mean, it's a little personal. You might not well, want to share it, but I that's felt, okay. Yeah, I'm going to be honest. I fell in love. So, you decided to leave this country, America, right? Right. The, the land of plenty, right? Home of the brave, the whole thing. You got here at 15. You have this great job. You're doing well. You get to go back to Poland every once in a while. Just have you know, have a good time without your parents there. I'm assuming that you know you had a lot of money. You're going back to Poland. You're spending it, throwing big parties, and you meet a girl. Right. And did she pressure you to want to stay there, or were you like, you know what, I just want to be with you? How did how did that all go down? Well, at first I went back for like a couple months just to like check things out and everything. So see how it goes, and then I decided to just stay, you know? So, like, we didn't consider, like, moving over here. So you never considered moving over here? And do you want to tell the, the fine audience her name? Uh, it's Evelina. Evelina. Perfect. And I just wanted to tell one that they have a beautiful son right now. Is that right? Right. And how old is he? Two and a half. And his name is? Alexander. So, so far, so good, right? It's worked out so far, yeah, right? Yeah. You made the right decision. Right. So let's talk about 2013. You decided to move to Poland. And why don't you share the experience that you and I had? So, folks that don't know, Tomasz and his brother spent a lot of time with me, even at my house on the weekends, just helping me do stuff, a lot of stuff. We've done a lot of things, a lot of cleaning ups, a lot of put things together. Crazy projects Adam is coming up with every, every weekend. <laughs> every basically. weekend I come up, but I, I can't sit still, so I have a new project every weekend to work on. You get so a Tomasz, whole podcast on those, I think. Oh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> a couple of them, yeah. Like so, series, I got, yeah. so I got upset with Tomasz one time. Remember that time I got upset back in 2013? You want to share how upset I got with you that day? Well, I basically had no job over there. Like, I didn't know what I was going to do once I moved back. So basically, Tomas is not only meets a girl, is going to leave the job, leave his friends and family that he's got here, go back to Poland to be with this girl, Evelina. He doesn't have a job over there. No job prospects. So then I find out. I'm like, what do you mean? You're moving back. I'm like, okay, that's fine. And like, you're not going to stay working at FIA? And what did you say? I asked my manager if I can maybe do some stuff like remotely. And the manager said? Really remotely. <laughs> wasn't possible. Right. So the, Tomasz's manager at the time said that he could not work remotely. So I said, why wouldn't you want to work for us in Poland? So we actually, I sat down with Tomasz. I was so upset that he didn't just come to me with this. I'm like, listen, we actually opened an office 
in Poland right away in 2013. Is that right? Right, right yeah. And you've been working for us in Poland for the past six, six years. years. Yeah. And not only has it worked out, it worked out so well that Tomasz has done such a great job that he is now a trainer. When he comes back, and you come back, what, twice a year now? Yeah, twice a year, basically. So he's actually here in our offices, folks. He's in Branch, Massachusetts right now, physically with us. He comes back. He trains our current staff because he is the most efficient person that we have working on what we call our claims support department. So it's worked out pretty well. Yeah, it did. We had to like figure out, was it even possible like uh, from the technical perspective? But it worked, all worked out great. But it's worked out so great that now we have another employee that works in our FIA Group Consultant Division, Magda right. Cheplik, that now works in our uh, consultant department that p- drafts plan documents also from Poland. Now, the difference is, Tomas, you live in the northeastern section yeah, of Poland, correct? Yeah, lives in the western part of Poland. Right. So, what was the, so if people in America had to come up with figure out, like, what does that mean? Like, all right, northeast part of Poland, what is the geography like there? Like, well, where I'm from is basically just... Uh, no bigger cities, lakes, beautiful environment. And the mountains? No, mountains are, are in the south. So what part of America would be similar to where you... Oh, wow. You ever think about that? No, actually, that's pretty interesting. Maybe like Western Massachusetts or something like that. Western Mass. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Like Springfield. Yeah. Like Probably even the mid Midwest parts of it too. Where the, yeah. yeah. Like Minnesota. Minnesota. Yeah. Oh, but yeah, is maybe, it plains? Yeah. Oh, they have this. Oh, there's forests. Oh, there's just 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 a mix of everything. Yeah. So like, I, I said the Great Plains, like yeah. Minnesota. Yeah. We can Illinois. See a lot of lakes. Minnesota's a land of Great Lakes. Right. That's what. There's a lot of lakes where you live. Right. 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 So what's the best part of your job? Like on a daily basis. So you obviously have an office there now. Yeah. So what's the best part of your job? And then what's the worst part? The best part, I would say, is uh, coming back here and sharing my experiences with people. What's the worst part? The worst part? Maybe doing the same thing over and over every day, but I don't mind this. I really like my everyday work. So we like to ask this question for people that are on the face of fee as well. What's the biggest difference between when you started here in 2007 and what the company looks like today? What do you say? If somebody asks you, like, so how, you know, how's the company different from when you started to where we are now? Well... When I first started, the company was like what, twenty something people. Right now, it's you know grew so, so much. Plus, like from my perspective, I'm basically doing the same thing that I did like ten years ago. But like uh, the process of doing it's like completely different. That uh, all the innovations that we have, like the system and everything, changed my job completely from when I started. We have no like physical files, like we said. So our our company has become more productive, a lot more efficient, right? Right. right more right, innovation. Right. right more, yeah. Right. Perfect. So, Tomas, anything you want to share with our listening audience? I mean, you mentioned it to us that you listen to all the podcasts. Yeah, Do you have I'm, any favorites? Oh, wow. It would be I mean, I'm hard. assuing all the ones that Brady's not on <laughs> are the ones that are better. I mean, you know, Brady and Ron are actually killing it every podcast, so. Wow, look at that. <laughs> Did he just I, say Brady and Ron are killing it every podcast? I think kill, no, killing it in a good way, I think. Yeah, right, In a good right. way? In See, a good I didn't way, miss a translation way. there. No, 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 no. We have to cut that off the uh, <laughs> actual podcast, uh, the live podcast that we have. No, any, any, any favorites that you have? Any favorites? Um, I like the Faces of Fia series. It's very entertaining. I feel like and, uh, meeting people I don't even like see every day too, because I'm work- working from home. So you get to actually know some people at Fia yeah, more than I, you would normally. Yeah. So last thing. So if if Reebok comes calling to you now in Poland, mm. are you would you take the job or you think you're gonna stick it out with us for now? If they were opening a store in my town, let's say. Um, you might you might consider <laughs> it. I now. might consider that. Yeah. Well, we're gonna have to do everything we possibly can to make sure Reebok does not open a store in this, <laughs> right. in this town. Okay. Hey, Tomas, what do you do for fun? What do I have to do outside of work? I really got into running last year. I've been running half marathons since... Uh, half marathons? Yeah. I'm so for those of you who don't know, that is 13.2? Two yeah. 13.2 miles. But in Poland, you don't use miles, right? No. So kilometers. how many kilometers is that? That's 21 kilometers because a full marath- marathon is uh, 42. So 21 kilometers. How often do you do that? Every couple of weeks. But uh, I train like, for the shorter distances during the week. Tomas, how long does it take you to do a half marathon? One hour, 33 minutes. That's my... You could do... You can do 12.2 miles in 90 minutes, 93 minutes. Yeah, basically, yeah. That's fast. That seems really fast. That's really fast. <laughs> That's like a cheetah. That's like insane. I think I could do five miles in that time. Like... That's really good, right? Uh, well, Come it's on, not. Pat it's yourself in the back. It's really good. Yeah, right? it's really good. Yeah, it's not pro yet, but it's it's really good. So he plans for the Boston Marathon, and then we get a fee waiting for you at the finish line. Is that, that is that in that, the that's future? A, that's a plan for twenty twenty, hopefully. Wow. Whoa! Is that, are we the first to know? Yeah, basically. Yeah. Listen, I don't know about you, 
Pat, there's got to be a podcast going on We're at the Boston Marathon, at the finish line, 2020. You think you could beat three hours? I don't know. It's hard, it's hard to say. But it's going to be close. Yeah. We have a marathoner here at FIA. So then we have marathoner, and then we have Ron. I mean, that's, you know, we got <laughs> both ends of the spectrum. We do not discriminate I here. Can start w- I can start looking for sponsors. So, I mean, you know. Oh. You gotta, I know. I know some. So, listen, our podcast audience, I'm sure we'll have a GoFundMe page. We're going to do everything we can. I'll send out an email blast to fund Tomasha's trip to America and his training regiment. I can always have, you know, the FIA logo everywhere. So the blanket or something. You'll wear yeah, the FIA yeah, logo. It's yeah, perfect. Right. Any last words, Tomas, before we go? That's true. I'm really pleased to be the guest of the FIA podcast. Feels great to be here with you guys. Awesome. See great you next time you. I'm here. Yeah. Folks, there you have it. Our first international FIA employee, Tomas Olszewski. On behalf of Brady Bizarro, myself, and Tomas, obviously. Oh, I can't forget our beloved producer, Pat Santos. Thank you so much for empowering your plans with the FIA group. Have a great day. Thanks. Thank you, guys.